now got the great pleasure to introduce James Fenton. James Fenton is a poet born in England in 1949, has worked as a political journalist, a drama critic, a book reviewer, a war correspondent, a foreign correspondent, as well as a columnist. He was Oxford Professor of Poetry between 1994 and 1999 and has been awarded the Queen's Gold Medal for Poetry. He selected poems, um, was published by Penguin in 2006. Our collaboration started about two years ago when James did an unforgettable reading uh, in Granada as part of the Eversteel exhibition uh, in the Locker House. Um, and his work is very, very admired by many artists. Um, a few weeks ago, Richard Hamilton told Julia Peyton Johnson and me how much he admires James Fenton's work. So a very warm welcome to James Fenton. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hans Ulrich. The first poem is uh, a, an evocation of um, the recent funeral of the poet Mick, Mick Imlar. It's called At the Curb. Grief to bestow where once they bestowed their beauty. Who are these mourners processing to the grave? each bearing a history like a precious ointment, and tender on their sleeves the wounds of love. Brutal disease has numbered him a victim, as if some unmarked car had appeared one day and snatched him off to torture and confinement, then dumped him by the curbside and sped away, as if they stooped now at the curb to lift the body as if they broke the jars and the unguent flowed, flowed down the sleeves and wounds, ran down the curbstones, grief to bestow what beauty once bestowed. This one's completely different. It's about cosmology, and it's called Cosmology, a prologue. We know where the cauldrons were buried, and the axes, the flesh hooks, and the spits. We know the site of the obsidian mines and the source of the chocolate flint. But who first put these questions, we will never know. Who noticed the sun rise in winter between the wolf's teeth and thought to mark the summer's trajectory? Who measured the shadow? Who sank the great pits for the calendar stones? Who kept in mind an ancient calculation and served his tribe for a memory. We know that the stars were constant to the navigator's eye, but who first remarked the piano planets in their retrograde motions? Who first saw the sky as a question? That we do not know. Or who first conceived the earth as a general proposition? When the season favored the ships and the horizons were friendly, when wind and current carried men forth like a desire and the village rounded on the young, be gone or be a burden to us. They found the old tales to be true of land succeeding to land and life beyond the promontory, places of distant wealth. But who first thought of the moon as a place in the sense that an archipelago is a place? Who saw this place pass overhead? Who viewed the sky as an archipelago and the constellations as a clock? who enrolled in the night as in a university and abandoned the archipelago, vanishing into the breakers one summer evening, dedicating his destiny to the spheres. We have marked the first lands to be beggared by tillage and the epoch when sheep first yielded wool. We can question the composition of a tooth. We can fix the age of a splinter. We are renowned for our superb equations. But the music is lost that served the oarsmen for a meter. And the songs are forgotten that praised the moon and the sun for the 14 divisions of summer, while the winter months went nameless and unsung. They built their ships, not from a drawn design, but from a series of learned procedures. They sang their boats into being. They sang what they knew of the skies, and they sang the names of every visible star. But who first said, where I walk is earth, and where I drown is earth as well. My hearth as a man, my roof tree, my harbor, my grave. Who first saw the moon as an earth at a distance? 
All the evidence was destined to be lost. Every chanted word, every sketch in the sand, all thoughts committed to leaf and skin. And this largest thought, this first cosmologist, must have grasped for an instant before shying away from it, pushing it away from him to wait, as these questions have waited for their tens of thousands of seasons, patient or indifferent to our expertise. This one's called Out of the East. Out of the south came famine, out of the west came strife, out of the north came a storm cone, and out of the east came a warrior wind, and it struck you like a knife. Out of the east there shone a sun as the blood rose on the day, and it shone on the work of the warrior wind, and it shone on the heart, and it shone on the soul, and they called the sun dismay. And it's a far cry from the jungle to the city of Phnom Penh, and many try and many die before they can see their homes again. And it's a far cry from the paddy track to the palace of the king. And many go before they know it's a far cry. It's a war cry. Cry for the war that can do this thing. A foreign soldier came to me, and he gave me a gun. And he predicted victory before the year was done. He taught me how to kill a man. He taught me how to try. But he forgot to say to me how an honest man should die. He taught me how to kill a man who was my enemy but never how to kill a man who'd been a friend to me. You fought the way a hero fights. You had no head for fear, my friend, but you are wounded now, and I'm not allowed to leave you here alive. Out of the east came anger, and it walked a dusty road, and it stopped when it came to a river bank, and it pitched a camp, and it gazed across to where the city stood, when out of the west came thunder, but it came without a sound, for it came at the speed of the warrior wind, and it fell on the heart, and it fell on the soul, and it shook the battleground, and it's a far cry from the cockpit to the foxhole in the clay. And we were a coordinate in a foreign land far away, and it's a far cry from the paddy track to the palace of the king. And many try, and they ask why it's a far cry. It's a war cry. Cry for the war that can do this thing. Next year the army came for me, and I was sick and thin, and they put a weapon in our hands, and they told us we would win. And they feasted us for seven days, and they slaughtered a hundred cattle, and we sang our songs of victory in the glory of the battle. And they sent us down the dusty roads in the stillness of the night, but when the city heard from us, it burst in a flower of light. The tracer bullets found us out. The guns were never wrong, and the gunship said, regret, regret the words of your victory song. Out of the north came an army, and it was clad in black. And out of the south came a gun crew with a hundred shells and a howitzer, and we walked in black along the paddy track. When out of the west came Napalm, and it tumbled from the blue, and it spread at the speed of the warrior wind, and it clung to the heart, and it clung to the soul, as Napalm is designed to do. And it's a far cry from the fireside to the fire that finds you there, in the foxhole by the temple gate, the fire that finds you everywhere. And it's a far cry from the paddy track to the palace of the king, and many try, and they ask why. It's a far cry. It's a war cry. Cry for the war that can do this thing. My third year in the army, I was 16 years old, and I had learnt enough, my friend, to believe what I was told. And I was told that we would take the city of Phnom Penh. And they slaughtered all the cows we had, and they feasted us again. And at last we were given river mines, and we blocked the great Mekong. And now we trained our rockets on the landing strip at Pochentong. The city lay within our grasp. We only had to wait. We only had to hold the line by the foxhole, by the temple gate, when out of the west came cluster bombs, and they burst in a hundred shards. And every shard was a new bomb, and it burst again upon our men as they gasped for breath in the temple yard. Out of the west came a new bomb, and it sucked away the air, and it sucked at the heart, and it sucked at the soul, and it found a lot of children there, and it's a far cry from the temple yard, to the map of the general staff, from the grease pen to the gasping men, to the wind that blows the soul like chaff, and it's a far cry from the paddy track to the palace of the king, and many go before they know it's a far cry, it's a war cry, cry for the war that has done this thing. A foreign soldier came to me, and he gave me a gun, and the liar spoke of victory before the year was done. Oh, what would I want with victory in the city of Phnom Penh? Punish the city, punish the people. What would I want but punishment? We have brought the king home to his palace. We shall leave him there to weep. And we'll go back along the paddy track 
for we have promises to keep, for the promise made in the foxhole, for the oath in the temple yard, for the friend I killed on the battlefield, I shall make that punishment hard. Out of the south came famine, out of the west came strife, out of the north came a storm cone, and out of the east came a warrior wind, and it struck you like a knife. Out of the east there shone a sun, as the blood rose on the day, and it shone on the work of the warrior wind, and it shone on the heart, and it shone on the soul. And they called the sun dismay, my friend. They called the sun dismay. Blood and lead. Listen to what they did. Don't listen to what they said. What was written in blood has been set up in lead. Lead tears the heart. Lead tears the brain. What was written in blood has been set up again. The heart is a drum. The drum has a snare. The snare is in the blood. The blood is in the air. Listen to what they did. Listen to what's to come. Listen to the blood. Listen to the drum. And the last one's called Jerusalem. Stone cries to stone, heart to heart, heart to stone, and the interrogation will not die. For there is no eternal city, and there is no pity, and there is nothing underneath the sky, no rainbow and no guarantee. There is no covenant between your God and me. It is superb in the air. Suffering is everywhere, and each man wears his suffering like a skin. My history is proud. Mine is not allowed. This is the cistern where all wars begin. The laughter from the armored car. This is the man who won't believe you're what you are. This is your fault. This is a crusader vault. The brook of Kidron flows from Mir Shirim. I will pray for you. I will tell you what to do. I'll stone you. I shall break your every limb. Oh, I am not afraid of you. But maybe I should fear the things you make me do. This is not Golgotha. This is the Holy Sepulchre, the Emperor Hadrian's temple to a love which he did not much share. Golgotha could be anywhere. Jerusalem itself is on the move. It leaps and leaps from hill to hill. And as it makes its way, it also makes its will. The city was sacked. Jordan was driven back. The pious Christians burned the Jews alive. This is a minaret. I'm not finished yet. We're waiting for reinforcements to arrive. What was your mother's real name? Would it be safe today to go to Bethlehem? This is the garden tomb. No, this is the garden tomb. I'm an Armenian. I'm a Copt. This is Utopia. I came here from Ethiopia. This hole is where the flying carpet dropped the prophet off to pray one night. And from here, one hour later, he resumed his flight. Who packed your bag? I packed my bag. Where was your uncle's mother's sister born? Have you ever met an Arab? Yes, I'm a scarab. I'm a worm, I am a thing of scorn. I cry impure from street to street and see my degradation in the eyes I meet. I am your enemy. This is Gethsemane. The broken graves look to the Temple Mount. Tell me now and tell me when. When shall we all rise again? Shall I be first in that great body count? When shall the tribes be gathered in? When, tell me, when shall the last things begin? You are in her error. This is terror. This is your banishment. This land is mine. This is what you earn. This is the law of no return. This is the sour dough. This the sweet wine. This is my history. This my race. And this unhappy man threw acid in my face. Stone cries to stone. Heart to heart, heart to stone. These are the warrior archaeologists. This is us, and that is them. This is Jerusalem. These are the dying men with tattooed wrists. Do this, and I'll destroy your home. I have destroyed your home. You have destroyed my home. Thank you.